Hi, this is Chandrasekhar from Nuage Networks. In this video, we will provide you with an overview on Nuage Networks SD-WAN 2.0 platform and its ability to host third-party VNF such as the VRV VPMAs or VRV Virtual Performance Monitoring Agents. The Nuage Networks platform is the industry's first and only next-gen SD-WAN platform, enabling the connectivity between business users to business applications anywhere at unmatched scale. It provides seamless connectivity between those users and their business application in public cloud, private cloud, or SaaS. The Nuage network solution is also called the Virtualized Services Platform. It's a cloud-native application that consists of a management plane in the form of VSD, the control plane in the form of VSC, and then the data plane is represented by an x86 physical CPE device called the Network Services Gateway or a virtual CPE that can run on any third-party CPE. We also provide a wide range of value-added services that are a mix between embedded features as well as third-party VNFs that are either hosted or service-chained. The Nuage platform employs a flexible and open VNF support framework. This framework allows us to support VNFs and CNFs on our universal CPE device without requiring any proprietary hardware or complex custom integrations. The management and control plane allow for a variety of features and supports of that framework like VNF onboarding, the ability to build a catalog of VNFs, lightweight lifecycle management for these VNFs including service chaining of these VNFs into specific traffic flows. The RESTful Northbound API enables customers and partners to build easy integration that leverage all of these capabilities and features of the platform. This architecture provides many benefits to our customers. For example, the agility by offering on-demand services anywhere in the network, openness in avoiding vendor lock-in with a wide range of partners that offer VNFs. There are also aspects of security and scalability that cannot be overlooked. There are three basic steps of running a VNF in the platform. The definition step, where you define the characteristics of the VNF. The design, that is, how to deploy that VNF in the network and attach it. And the final is deploy, which is picking the target UCP device and managing the day-to-day -day operation of the VNF. Now let's take a look at the deployment of the VRV VNF. In the defined phase, we create the descriptor for the VNF. In the design phase, we decide how we want to deploy the VNF. And in the deploy phase, we push the VNF onto a particular site before finally inserting it into the data path of a particular application flow. A typical large enterprise consists of the VRV VPMA deployed on a UCPE device and the VRV Fusion dashboard running locally. The first step, as described earlier, is deploying the VPMA on a particular UCPE device. Once deployed, it will be managed locally using the VRV Fusion dashboard. The next step here is test VNF configuration and demo. Once we have the VNFs, which are called VPMAs, deployed on the UCPE device, we're going to create a few tests. For that, we're going to log in to the VRV Fusion dashboard and create a TVAMP reflector and a TVAMP initiator between two different VNFs. The next step is running the test between these two VNFs. We will see a demo on how to create and run the TVAMP initiator and reflector. Let's log into the BSD. Now we have to create VNF descriptors and the VNF metadata. For that, let's go to platform configuration from the right top corner, select applications and click on VNF. Let's create the VNF metadata. Click on the plus icon, enter a name, the content of the blob can be found in the guide. 
click on create click ok now you have the VNF metadata so let's create the VNF descriptor click on the plus icon give the descriptor a name the VNF type here is firewall let us enter all the required details like the memory, storage and CPU count select the metadata that you just created for threshold policy use default once we create the descriptor we have to add three interfaces for this descriptor enter management and select the type management Repeat this for LAN and WAN. This completes the VNF descriptor creation. Now let's go back to the enterprise view. One important step here is to go under networks and see that we have L3 management domain to carry the management traffic. Now let's go ahead and create the VNF instances. From application, go to VNF, click on the plus icon, give the VNS instance a name, select the descriptor that you just created and select the target UCP device where you want to deploy the VNF. Once you have created this, Another important step is to connect the management interface to the corresponding VNF management domain. The next step is to go under networks, select the customer L3 domain and create a VNF domain mapping. Select the target UCP device where you want to deploy the VNF and click create. This VNF domain mapping allows the system to create the required vports and subnets to insert the VNF into the data path. Once this is done, the next step is to deploy the VNF. Click applications, go to VNF, click on the VNF and now click on the DNA icon as shown. Under Actions, select Deploy and click on Invoke. It takes a few seconds for the VNF to change its state from init to shut off. Once the state changes to shut off, we can go ahead and start the VNF. We can see that the state of VNF has changed to shut off. Now under Action, click Start and click on invoke and the VNF should be up in any second. Now let's go ahead and create a test on the VIB Fusion dashboard. Let's log in to the VIB Fusion dashboard. Once you log in, you will see the list of all the available VPMAs. You can see that the state here is idle. We're going to create a TVM reflector on one of these VNFs which is going to reflect all the packets sent to it. In this case, we're going to use HQ1. Note down the IP address, click on start, enter the IP address, subnet and gateway. Leave all the other details as it is and click on start reflector. It can take a few seconds for the reflector to be up and running. Once it is done, click on OK and close it. The next step here is to create the TVAMP initiator which will be running on the other VNF. We'll be doing that on branch 1. So note the IP address, click on add test, select new test, select the TVAMP initiator. Now since the reflector is already running on HQ1, we will be running the initiator on branch 1. Click select, select the interval as 1 minute. Enter the IP address, the subnet mask, and the gateway. 
leave the UDP port as it is. Now click on sessions, click on the control server slash reflector, enter the IP address of the reflector and leave the port as it is and click on done. Once all of it is done, click on start test. It takes a few seconds for us to see the results since we have selected the update interval as one minute. Let's wait for the results. You can see that the test ran successfully. We can see more details under show all flows and run reports. That's it for the demo. Thank you. This concludes the demonstration. For more information, visit www.nuagenetworks.net. Thank you.